Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar on how to get started with pad printing shirts, promo products, and more. I'm your host, Zach Dewhurst, the Business Development Manager at Deco Network, and today's guest is Michael Barron, the West Regional Sales Manager at Ink Cups. How's it going, Michael? Good morning, Zach. Very good. How are you? Good. I'm real excited to talk about pad printing because it's, you know, there's a lot of products that are printed uh, using pad printing decoration process. And I think a lot of our viewers don't know exactly how it works. I mean, you go to, I go to a lot of trade shows throughout the year and, yeah. you know, there's really two big ones, Long Beach Impressions and Printing United. And I always see ink cups at those shows and the booth is always hopping because it's really cool uh, decoration process. It's not as difficult, I feel, that a lot of, um, you know, our viewers may think. And as we're gonna talk about the profit and, and just the cost to pad print are a lot less than I think a lot of us uh, realize. So I'm real excited to talk about, um, again, pad printing and how Ink Cups has kind of revolutionized this decoration process. Sounds so great. let's just dive right into it. What is pad printing? Well, <laughs> it is, a printing process in which you use a pad to transfer an image from an engraved plate to any garment, piece, or product. Michael, you want to expand upon that a little bit for us? Yes, that's typically exactly right. So the artwork is typically nowadays, it's laser, usually laser etched onto the plate uh, to a very fine depth. And then the the ink is put into the ink cup, it goes onto, it goes over the plate, and then the pad will transfer, shuttle backwards and forwards, picking up the art, picking up the ink from the edge and laying it down onto the t-shirt, garment, product itself. The way I like to look at it, Michael, is it, it is spot color printing. Now, screen printing can be spot or process, but the way I like to look at it is it's kind of like stamp stamp screen printing is this the best way i can describe yes. it uh yes. you know it's that's really what it is um but you know when we have some video we have a video here we're going to play in a second um but gosh is the footprint of this equipment very minimal the learning curve is very minimal and the setup you know while screen printing you know anytime we got to burn plates or engrave plates to do this it takes a little bit, but you can be on, you know, the machine within around 30 minutes and be printing hundreds of products an hour with it. So again, in its simplest form, it's a spot color print in which when it's printed onto the product, the ink dries instantly, which means there's no dryer. And again, the equipment footprint is much smaller. So why use, you know, pad printing? Why, you know, have this decoration process in your shop? Well, <laughs> one is the cost. So Michael, you, you want to kind of explain to us what the costs are for a pad printed product? Yeah. So the, one of the reasons why it's become so popular with a lot of the major apparel brands out there is the, is exactly right. The cost per print, so to speak, when you, if you're making millions and millions of t-shirts every, every month, uh, you need a low cost solution for putting on neck tags and so forth. So, uh, the, the average cost for a neck tag print, for example, is 0 0.003, uh, exactly right there. Yep. I mean, look, yep. And, and, you know, if you think about one of those t-shirt manufacturers, they're doing thou hundreds of thousands of shirts. They need to yeah. be efficient. You don't want to just transfer or screen print each one at a time. Uh, gosh, is it fast. Um, when, when I've seen some of those YouTube videos, I mean, they're printing a thousand plus products an hour um, with the right operator, it seems like. That's correct. That's exactly correct. It's very, very fast. If you compare it to say screen or to say even heat transfer, it's just, it's very, very quick. Yeah. And, and again, there, because it's an instant dry, there's no dryer. And, and I can't state that enough of like dryers are one, they take a lot of electricity and yep. they just take space. There's just tons of things. I love the instant dry uh, capability, whether you're going on to, again, that fabric, uh, shirt, or maybe you're going on to a hard good, 
um, like a promo product because a lot of promo products are printed with pad printers. I mean, yes. it is just transferring in a way, again, it's this, you're gonna see here in a second, you stamp the plate or essentially, I, I should I should let you explain it because it, it, again, it's it's hard to kind of explain when, when we get to the slide of showing the video, it, it really explains itself. But like you said, speed, I mean, 800 impressions an hour uh, and you're on press in 30 minutes. That's efficiency, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And then you get with a good operator, we have good operators of certain factories um, where they're doing uh, what, what, you know, and they, the companies reward them on productivity. So the faster they go, they get a little bonus. So we have operators doing well over a thousand t-shirts an hour on, on, one, on, on a pad printer. Yeah. On one simple, you know, machine that again, that, and we're going to talk about the cost. I mean, these, Printers are not that expensive when you're comparing to other setups. Um, and, and again, it goes back to Michael, every decoration process has a time and place. You know, you don't want to print, you know, maybe a six color always with one of these for 20 pieces. You know, that that's not what it's set up to do necessarily. It is um, a little bit of a higher run with, again, because it's a spot color, a few amount of colors. Um, the yep. hand though super super soft ink if you're going to be printing a neck tag that's you know rubbing against you know the person wearing it it needs to feel soft and it's virtually nothing here i mean it feels like it's practically sublimated yep. um there's no rough plastisol feel um right. and the detail i mean it's amazing that you can get so much detail for stamping something because if you think about stamping or even heat pressing a transfer typically some of that ink will expand and and go out six point type i mean that's very detailed and again you need that ability i mean look how detailed and small that is that text so it needs to be very um needs to be able to hold that and then durability michael i mean it's got to last so mm -hmm. The idea, correct me if I'm wrong, is the print should last pretty much longer than the garment itself. Um, that's correct. That yeah, right? That's correct. Typically, uh, 50 plus washes, It's uh, they, they've been tested to like at least 50 washes. So, yeah, that's pretty much, my, in my, for most t-shirts, that's pretty much as, as the lifespan of a t-shirt. So, yeah. Michael, how long has this technology and this process been around? Uh, pad printing has been around, and um, in 2001, um, our founder, Ink Cups, uh, developed the sealed ink cup uh, called a Versa Cup. And before, before it was a sealed cup, it was open, open ink systems, which are very problematic to temperature swings, dust, contaminants, that kind of thing getting in there. So he invented the the the, the sealed cup, and that really revolutionized the pad printing industry since then. But uh, but this kind of te this technology has been around for a while. It's not new technology. It's been around at least 20, 24 years, 25 years. Wow. Okay. Um, and again, it, what what a good way to look at I think pad printing is it's a lot like screen printing. You know, with screen printing, before you get on press, you need to make up you need to make a stencil with the screen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. with pad printing, right. you need to make a plate so that you can actually you know transfer that ink or again i, I'm, I don't want to use the wrong verbiage when it comes to transfer and so forth but mm -hmm. you have plates and the way you look at a plate is like it's a screen and just mm -hmm. like screens they come in different mesh counts so there's different types of plates correct that so, is correct yep good good michael so there is different types of plates and customers typically decide, um, you know, they typically look at the run size of the jobs that they want to do, and then they will choose the, to choose the plates. We have different types of styles or the plates are fairly, they're fairly inexpensive. They range from anywhere $10 uh, to maybe $25, depend, depending on the plate, the plate type and the plate size. And we have, you know, we have many different size pad printers and different numbers of colors. So depending on the pad printer that the customer will, will use or have, will depending on the plate, but they range from 10,000 to 100,000 impressions. Um, the average plate, the, the most inexpensive plate, the $10 plate, you'll get 25,000 impressions from that plate easily. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and um, again, we're going to talk more about how to select the right type of plate, but it's heavily coming down to the amount of impressions, the size uh, of it, correct? Correct. Correct. Yes. You, you want, you want to, you want to choose if you're going to do a, if you're going to do a, let's say you're doing a 10,000, 15, $20,000, your 20,000 piece uh, run, you'll you have a plate for that. And then if you're doing a run on say maybe a hundred thousand pieces or more, you might go for a different plate. That's going to last a little bit longer versus having to swap a plate out every, you know, 25,000, 30,000 impressions. Okay. Yeah. Now, you got to make the plate. So first you select the type of plate and then you need to etch it. And so when it comes to screen printing, there's multiple ways you can develop a screen. Uh, you know, you can, you act, you know, one of the newest ways is using a laser, a little bit different than what you guys are doing here. Um, but again, the type of laser that is used is also going to dictate what type of plate is used. Correct, Michael? Yes, correct. So, so there, so getting getting a really good laser etch onto the plate is very important because, uh, just like screen printing, if you do if you make a bad screen, you get a bad print. If you mm -hmm. make a bad if you if you have a if you have a bad image laser etched, you'll get a bad print. So that is very important. So these plates are laser etched, and typically um, they're used usually etched on a CO two laser or a fiber laser. Um, so, it, and, and, you know, obviously some, some customers may have their own lasers in house, which may be suitable, but sometimes not. And the reality is these, these plates, they don't take a lot of power to make that. We like to use low power, but we like to, to take some time inscribing it to make, to get the depth correctly. So anything, I mean, to get too technical, if, if people have lasers, anything above a 30 watt CO2 is very challenging. May most cases I've yet to see any any customers make that work. Uh, if it's 30 watts or below, like a low powered laser, they can usually work pretty well. Um, if you have a fiber laser, if you can adjust the settings of the fiber laser, they they work as well. So the plates are etched with CO2s or fibers. Okay. Michael, you just brought up, you know, you need to get that right depth. What happens if you don't go deep enough or you go too deep what how would that affect the print quality you'll get if you go too deep you'll get it'll pick up too much ink and you'll get it'll get ble it'll it'll look a little smudgy and then if you don't get the depth correctly enough which is about 25 microns if you don't get that depth to that level you'll get too little print you'll the, the print will be very faint okay okay um, and, and how much has the technology evolved with just the laser etching, you know, equipment? Like has, has, can you hold more detail today than you could 15 years ago? Yes, absolutely. The, the, the speeds have gotten a lot better with the lasers, the marking size fields have gotten a lot better with the lasers. So yeah, you can do, a, you can do a lot, any kind of image, you know, in the old days, certain images were tough to do, but Nowadays, you can do any bold image, any fine print, any small font, any any graphic you can think about. You can do that with a with a laser etch. Now, mm -hmm. I think this is really cool too. Uh, you guys at Ink Cups, if somebody doesn't want to invest in their own laser uh, mm -hmm. to etch their own plates, Ink Cups does provide this as a service, correct? Yes, they do. Yes, absolutely. So for people, for people who do, who may not have a laser in house, Zach, or who don't want to invest in a getting a laser at the, at this time, uh, yes, Incups can make the plates for them. It's a very simple process. They would just email us the artwork. We would send them a proof within about an hour. If that looks good as far as position and orientation, then we'll go ahead and make that plate and ship it to them in two days. A uh, very small fee for that, so we do help them. We do we can make the plates for for people. So it's ideal for people, Zach, who may not have hundreds of artwork or, or a small, only maybe a handful of images. It's ideal for that. They really don't need to get a laser for that. But but somebody, but if you're a shop and you're doing a lot of a lot of tags, a lot of plates, you know, eventually it might be, you know, eventually you'll probably be better off getting your own laser so you can make your own plates whenever you want. Sometimes you might get a rush job and you can't, you can't wait two days for the plate maybe. So 
So that's why sometimes people say, oh, I'll just, I'll just get the laser and then I can make the plate within a couple of minutes. The customer can email me the artwork. I can make that plate whenever I want and I have to wait and get the job going right away, you know? Yep. What, what I also really like um, about what Ink Cups does is you guys kind of make it a one-stop shop. You make it as turnkey as possible. Uh, if you think about like equipment for most decoration processes, you know, you go to M&R uh, for screen printing, you go to Tajima for embroidery, and not that it's always really necessary, but they only sell you the equipment and you go to somebody else for the consumables and, and so forth. With ink cups, you guys are the one-stop shop, whether it be you need plates or you need the plates actually made for you, you need the ink, you need the equipment. You guys have done all of the testing and know exactly how it all can come together perfectly and just make, you know, remove a lot of that guesswork. Is, is that sound about right? Yes, that, that's exactly right. That is exactly right, Zach. We, 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 will, we do everything. We're our a turnkey solution for pad printing. We make the machines, we make the, la we make the machines, we make the lasers, we make the plates, we make the pads, we supply the inks, the solvents, the rings, the cleaners, everything that, everything and anything that you would need for pad printing, it's a one, it's a one phone call. One, one company can supply everything that you need for it. You don't have to go them. You don't have to go out searching around for for inks or plates or any that kind of stuff. It's the ink ups do everything that you'd ever need. And if you ever, you know, troubleshooting, it's a lot easier to work with that company when they're supplying everything versus yep. having to go to a bunch of different, you know, <laughs> vendors and equipment and all the yeah, other things that go wrong. Yeah. It's one phone call. It's one phone call, one email. That's it. Yeah, one phone call, one email. And we have a pad printing support department that are very responsive to our customers. Uh, there, you you mentioned earlier that you know there, there is a pad printing is very very simple technology. It's it's very it's it's a pneumatic driven system. There's no moving parts. There's very little maintenance required. For somebody who's never even seen a pad printer, we can get them running printing T-shirts within two or three hours. It's very very simple. Yeah. Very small learning curve, um, which everybody likes. And even the operator, I mean, um, very small learning curve. And it's also not very difficult. I, you know, I don't think most um, threading of a shirt and nailing a location is difficult, but like, especially neck tags, that's super easy to just nail. And even if it was just a little bit crooked, nobody's going to be saying anything. So I, I just, I love that you could bring somebody in that day into your company and have them uh, on the machine and being successful immediately. Um, mm -hmm. So the laser though. So, so the way I would look at it is this is your exposure unit to a degree, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're making your stencil. So, um, and again, I, I love that um, ink cups, it, it's their equipment. They're not telling you, you need to go get this and it should work this way. So talk to us a little bit about the Cobalt One and how that works. So the Cobalt One is a very, very popular desktop fiber laser. It is a very, very popular for customers that have multiple pad printers. It's very quick. Um, it's, for, it's quick at making the plates. It's a, it's a U.S. made machine. It connects right to your laptop or your computer. Um, it's got a pretty good size marking field. It's got a 50 micron spot size you can see here. And it's it's a very popular unit that the plate goes inside. That is the, the front of the machine is a handle right there where the plate goes in. You, should, you close down the handle. The laser will etch the plate in about a minute, two minutes or so for an average plate. And then takes it out, and it's uh, your plate's good to go. So this this plate is the laser. This is a very popular laser. If you if you're having maybe you know if you got a couple of pad printers and you want to get these plates done pretty quick. Michael, do we have to have a vector, or would like a transparent high resolution PNG technically be possible? Uh, to, uh, t it could be either of, either of, but vectors bet vector is preferred. Okay. Yeah, just just like screen printing. Again, it's very similar. I can yes. print. I can make a positive with a PNG, but uh, I take a vector all day. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is the this Cobalt One. This is the top of the line laser. Is that correct? E yes. If you want to call it that, this would be the top of the line. This would be for somebody. This would be for somebody who has multiple machines. I, for somebody starting off with one pad printer, you know, they might get this, but. 
but typically we have a smaller unit print, have one machine. This is some, we typically, customers have four or five pad printers in their shop and they're, they're making plates all day long, running, running these pad printers all day long, different jobs. This would be a, a, a this is the, uh, the, the laser for them, yeah. How much is the cobalt one? Uh, this is about uh, 27,000. Okay, and um, like how often do you have to replace, you know, the laser, do anything like that with, with one of these? Uh, well, this is the thing, this is one of the differences between fiber and CO2. Fiber has got a really, really long life on a fiber laser. It's a fiber optic, so it doesn't have a ceramic, doesn't have a light source tube in there, which is about 30,000 hours on a CO2. So a fiber laser, I mean, typically, you know, this will last, you know, <laughs> I mean, we've got them out there for, you know, for a long, long time. I mean, I mean hypothetically, you could last 20 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the fiber. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then we have the Cobalt 2000, which is, like you said, th this is the fiber laser, correct? No, no. Um, CO2, no, I meant. CO2. Yep. Yeah. And this is, yep. this is, oh, oh. Yeah, this is a desktop, a small desktop uh, connects to your computer or your laptop. It's a CO2 laser. So a little bit different. Um, this is a this is a laser. It takes a little it's got a little bit bigger marking field area. If you notice this 15 by 18. So we have a we have the ability to make etch a large plate. Now, you might wonder why would I need such a plate that size for apparel? Well, you probably wouldn't. But 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 you can do things like um, you know, we, we, we make plates with this and people can do chest, I mean, in the, in the apparel world, they can do chest hits, uh, sleeve hits, that kind of thing, you know, full prints. So that's why people like to have the ability to do a larger print. And then we print, and obviously not just the apparel, you can print on the hard goods, you know, you mentioned journals and phone cases and larger or Frisbees, forgot, you know, we do all sorts of crazy things with them. So you can mark um, mark larger, larger field items with this unit. Um, so this is a CO2 laser. So typically a CO2 tube is about 30,000 run hours. So it's still pretty good. If you if you run this laser eight hours a day, you'd be looking at 11 years of, of, of use. So it's, you know, so it's a pretty, pretty, pretty long, you know, it's a pretty long, long time investment. Um, it, it has, it does a really nice job of getting, uh, controlling the depth and, and adjusting the depth for it. Um, it does just like with all lasers, though that you know you'll you'll need to have a little fume extraction system with it. With late when you're etching, you get a little bit of smoke, a little bit of, a little bit of fine dust, uh, and a little bit of fumes. Not not so much. So we can this machine will this laser comes with a little small fume, centralized fume extraction system, which takes care of the fumes, the dust, and the particulate, particulate and the fumes and the smoke. So with the um, fiber. We're looking at around, um, I'm sorry, yeah, fiber, two or three minutes versus um, CO2, maybe around 10 minutes to make it. Yeah, it, that's that's an average. It, it depends on the artwork, how big the artwork. If, it, if it's a smaller neck tag, for example, for apparel neck tags, it would probably be a little bit less than 10, probably about seven or eight maybe. But but we just put 10 because sometimes you have a, it depends on the detail, how much detail, if you've got, a, if it's just text and a logo, it's pretty quick. But if you've got like in detail graphics on there, maybe like real thick graphics, it could take a little bit longer. So on average is about 10 minutes, but you know, if it's seven to 10 minutes to make a plate on a forever and a power plate. And you could put different size plates in here. You don't have to use the big one and waste a bunch of it, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, all different, yeah, whatever you, you choose, the plates come in many different sizes that basically are determined to fit your printer. So whatever printer you have, you have the plates designed to fit that machine, and then you put the plate in there and, and use, use that plate. Ken, is there a difference in detail that's possible between the two types of lasers? Um, it, it, they, they both do a really, really good job of, of detail and so far like that, they, you know, that we, this is a slightly uh, uh, 80 micron size. So they both do a really good job of doing detail. Um, we like to, we, we like, if customers are concerned about that, we always ask them to send us the artwork file and we, we look at that and tell them to, we can refer them which laser is the most suitable for it. Um, and it's really, the both will do a great job of doing graphics and logos and things of that nature. So it's really, there's really no difference between the two as far as detail goes. They both do extremely, yeah. extremely high job of detail. Yeah. Okay. So you said around 27,000 for the fiber. How much is this CO2? This is more like 15. 
Okay. It's around 15. And then they both use, you know, we again have different size plates, different types, and some plates are meant to be, you know, etched with the CO2 versus some are meant to be etched with the fiber, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. And which plates are, is there a cost difference? You know, is, is the plate itself cheaper for the CO2 version versus the fiber? Um, it, it's uh, it, it, a little bit. Yes, that's correct. Depending on the size, the, the, the plates for the plates that we use on a CO2 um, are a little bit, a little bit less. So if you're doing, if you're getting lots of blank plates and laser etching, this is probably, you'd want to try and try and make a fit with this machine. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, you know, not going to sugarcoat it. These lasers aren't that cheap. I mean, when you start to look at the actual pad printer itself, yeah, this, it's more than <laughs> yeah. this yeah. is twice or three times as much as the printer itself. But if you have a fleet of printers, yeah. Again, it just goes back to, wow, it's really nice that I can just send it to ink cups. You know, if I'm just getting started, I'm not ready to, you know, no take that type of dive yet i i can just outsource it get it pretty quickly from ink cups yep. and yep. um be good to go yep. um and then once you have that you know like everything michael what i always suggest is build up your demand before you have to make that plunge uh yourself mm -hmm. and and absolutely can uh here and then like we, we said uh the actual ink cost and the amount of impressions you can do in a day i mean it's incredible but um, so we got to select the right pad. You know, when we, we, we're doing pad printing, now we're actually finally talking about what a pad is, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to us a little bit about how to select the right type of pad. Well, well, the, I mean, the, the, the customers, Zach, um, when, if, they, if they get a pad printer from Incops, it obviously comes with the, with the most suitable, the most generic, suitable, flexible, all around pad that comes with the machine. So they don't really have to worry about selecting it. But if let's say, for example, they're doing tagless and then somebody came to them and said, you know what, we'd like to pad print golf balls or pens or something really small like that. Well, the pad that they're using for the tagless shirt, you know, it may or may, it may work, but, but we have a whole selection of different shapes and sizes of pads and durometers, which means the thickness and the, how the, the, the density of the pad for all different types of applications. So golf balls and pens and different applications that a, a promo, you mean a promo customer I've run into. So we have a whole selection. We have a huge range of pads. Like we make them all, Incomes make them all themselves. These these ones here, we have custom pads. We have all different types of pads. So basically, what we do is we ask a customer, you know, if they're if you're if they're if they're concerned or if they're if they're wondering what might be the best pad to use, we just I'll be just asking the status of picture of the product, maybe with some measure measurements on it, and then we'll give them we'll give them two or three recommendations for the pad, and or one or two recommendations. We'll know what pad works best and they can get that if they want. Yeah. You know, you mentioned the durometer. I'll just keep going back to screen printing. You have different squeegee durometers. And yep. and it, it's all about using, you know, the right. It, there's a lot of ways you can get a product printed, but then there's a lot of fine variables that you can get the best results when you're using the right one. Um, how many impressions can we expect out of a pad before it has to be replaced? Uh, that's a good question. So it, dep it depends on, on, on the operator, but they, they last a long time too. I mean, you probably, you could probably get a year out of a pad. If you're running it every day, you probably, you could probably get a, a year out of a pad. Okay. And, and would be printing a hard product versus a soft, you know, like printing a shirt, it's probably less wear and tear versus going on to maybe that golf ball. Um, mm. Is that correct? Um, not, that, that doesn't really come in. I mean, we, on, on a t-shirt, for example, we, we use quite a bit of pressure going down to get the ink onto a t-shirt, a golf ball. We're just basically touching it or a pen. We're just kind of touching it. So that really doesn't have the effect the, the, what really affects the, the, the lifespan of these pads is, is, uh, if it's in a very, very hot and var hot and dry environment, they may dry out a little bit. So we, so we like to store them in a Ziploc in a cool environment, you know, air, air, air Ziploc bag, just keep them air, air, out of the air. And that's really, as far as that goes, the, the, the amount of pressure we, we use to, to contact to, is all adjustable. How, how hard we hit the, how hard or how soft we touch that product, that t-shirt, that golf ball, that's all adjustable. So that really doesn't have much of an effect. Okay. And 
let's just say, I don't even know if this is possible, but let's say we had ink still on it. And again, it dries instantly. Can I still get that ink off of there? Or yeah. no, is that yeah. a big no, no? No, 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 absolutely. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You may see some, there's some videos online of our customers in real production where they, where they take a little roll of scotch tape, like cell phone tape, and they just put it under the, that takes off any excess. So if you're doing a high speed run, you know, after, after a while, you may get to see some excess. So basically you would basically just use a cell phone tape, takes off the excess that takes a couple of seconds and then just keep on running. That's in the middle of a job run. And then in the, if you, at the end of the shift, for example, what you would do is you would just clean, you would just take solvent. We have cleaner. We just clean the pad at the end of the shift and it's good to go for the next trip. Okay. Next job. So your solvent in a way is like your reclaim, for yep. lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. um, how, how much is a pad? Just out of curiosity, you know, if I have to buy another one. It's, yeah, it depends. depends on the size and the type. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's just say your yeah, typical it, shirt one. Yeah, it's a, typically they can go from about like say three hundred to maybe like four hundred dollars for a for a pad. Okay. Yeah. Um. So take care of them is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, take take care of them. You know, after after you finish the job, it takes just a second to remove them. You can take them off the machine if you want. Stick them in a zip, clean them, put them in a ziploc bag, and don't leave them don't leave them on a shelf in the sunlight. You know, that's not a good idea. <laughs> you know. But they. Yeah. But millions of impressions. That's how you have yes. to look at all these costs, yeah. right? It, it's, yeah. you know, you're not doing this uh, for a couple hundred and it, no. it, over the lifespan, millions of impressions makes that pad come down to less than pennies per print um, yes. when it's yeah. all said. Yeah, okay, so we select the plate, we etch the plate. Now we have our stencil. We select the right type of pad, so we are going to be able to essentially stamp that plate, grab the ink, so we can then transfer it. But we got to have the right ink, so we got to mix the ink itself. And tell us how this works, Michael. Yeah, so typically how the process this works, um, this picture slides showing showing an ink, a solvent, and a hardener. So the hardener is what is used in apparel. When we're using mixing inks or printing onto apparel, for example, the hardener is what's going to give it the, the wash fastest for the for the wash for the wash washing cycles. So basically how this process works is it's kind of like almost like mixing um mixing a drink almost. Basically, you'll the, the ink comes in a two, in a kilogram can, then you have a can of solvent and hardener. And the way we like to mix it, Zach, is we get a paper cup, not a plastic cup, a paper cup. And then we, we take it's all and it's done. We need to use a gram scale, which is like a baking scale. And we and there's a there's a ratio. So we'll do is we may use say 40 grams of ink, um, 10 grams of solvent, five grams of hardener, and we use a paper stick, like a paper stirrer, like a lollipop stick. We mix it up to the mix it up to the viscosity of say maple syrup, where we just kind of and we show you how we teach you how to do that. And then that takes, you know, that could take a few, you know, two or three minutes to make that. And then once that's once that's in the right consistency, you mix it up with a stir. Once that's mixed, you pour it into the cup. It's magnetic, and you're good to go. Okay. When you say maple syrup, are we talking about real maple syrup or the stuff? <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah, yeah not the real watery stuff, but the one that's kind of like you know that does kind of flow. That's gonna flow. And we basically there's a trick we do. We would take this. We 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 lift the stick out of the of the mixture, and we try and draw a figure eight. And if you can see a figure eight in the, then you know it's the right viscosity. There's a, lots of tricks that our okay. technicians show, teach teacher operators how to do it. So make sure you get the correct viscosity. Yeah. I like that figure eight concept. I can <laughs> I can visualize that perfectly. Okay, yeah. the hardener, because obviously apparel gets the abuse from um, the wash cycles. I mean, between the washer and the dryer. What about golf balls? Like, how is it so durable? I actually have some right here. You know, how the heck can I keep hitting this thing? and it not you know have problems it doesn't scrape off i've never really seen a logo come off how does that work yeah so 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 we you know the, these things these pad printing inks are, are amazing you know when, when you when they're mixed with the hardeners they're so durable it's really incredible um we have ink cups you know we have we have about 12 different types of pad printing ink we have inks specially designed for you know obviously textile and apparel is one ink we have inks designed for metals plastics, glass, all these different types of materials that we can print onto. And some inks, 
most inks don't require, I mean, the great thing about textile inks, they don't require any dryers, as you mentioned earlier, they're just, they're air dry, they dry to, they dry to the touch in about three seconds, they dry instantly, but then they're completely dry, or finger, they're completely touch dry in about three seconds. Um, some of the other inks, um, some of, like glass inks, for example, they, they will require curing. So golf balls, so the inks they use on the golf balls, um, sometimes they're cured after they're printed, and that gives them the extra durability. Okay. So I have like several questions. One, it dries instantly, but it still may not be cured, correct? Correct. Right. Yep. So it may take like 12 hours, 24 hours, and you real then you feel free to wash it. Is, is that about right? Yeah, you can exactly, exactly. Once it once it goes on there, it's, then you can you can go ahead and wash it right right away. But once you print it, and you if you're printing it and you're shipping it to somebody, by the time they get it, they can wash it. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So next question, I see on this ink cups uh, ink, it says pad and screen printing ink. So you actually mm -hmm. could use this with screen printing. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and then you have many different types of inks for different substrates it sounds like how um many colors does ink cups carry for a lot of different you know substrates they're we have, you know, yeah we have a, a large color gamut of all of a, we have a color card of all the of all the different inks that you would need uh, we also have high density inks we also have metallic inks the golds the silvers we have metallics um we have we can you know we can do pan if some customers will want to they have pantone requirements pantone matching uh we can obviously we can we can mix the ink for them to the correct pantone and, and do it that way if they don't want to do it themselves so we can teach them how to do that they rather not do that and just have us do it you know we can do that for them there's a little upcharge for that but then we can then the ink that they get is pantone matched okay so love that a i can have ink cups mix that ink for me and again it's you're just mixing the ink it's not till the solvent and the hardener added that then that ink really has a strict shelf life which we're going to talk about in a second um but you saying that ink cups also sells pigments in a base in which you if you had a very accurate gram scale you could mix your own pantone color is that correct yeah yep Wow. Again, I, I know I'm getting probably old with this, but it's so similar to screen printing. And that's what most of our viewers are so used to. And it's like, this isn't that different. Um, it's very similar, right? It's like mini screen printing. <laughs> yeah. it, it is. Now, okay, so ink cups, let's, it's like screen printing where I have a gallon or a quart of ink. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I've played around with silicone um, screen printing. And it's, again, very similar in that you have a catalyst and you mix things but then it has a very short shelf life once you start mixing it. So with um, the ink, you'll have a container, you'll scoop out what you need for the day, correct? Correct, correct. So you'll scoop out what you need for the day into the cup. And then then at the end of the day, you'll, you'll, very, you'll rarely, very rarely have to like stop in the middle of a run and add more ink. Um, once you fill up that cup, it's going to it's going to last you all day for sure. At the end of the day, you're just going to you you'll you'll just take a rag and you just clean out what residue is in there of the cup and a little bit of ink that's left over, and you just dispose of that. Okay. You normally. I don't know just, how you guys you know, make money after you sell the machine because the consumables go millions of prints. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. They they do. They, they, it's not as if yeah, if pot thinners. Yeah, I got, you know, it's sometimes one kind of ink could last them a year, two years. So we don't <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a lot of the time you get an order in and if you're trying to like print it quickly, you're etching and while you're etching, you're mixing. And then, you know, by a half an hour, you could be on the machine and be printing. Oh, yeah. 20 minutes, max, max 20 minutes. I've never seen anyone do that. Yeah. It, it takes, it takes like five minutes to mix the ink, maybe eight minutes to make the plate and that's 13 minutes. And then, you know, just get, getting that plate, getting that, getting that cup onto the machine and getting, you know, it takes another, maybe another five minutes. So yeah, 20 minutes is, is, is typically the average. Cool. All right. Let's talk about the actual equipment now. So we've gone through the ink, the pad, the etching of the plate. Now we have the equipment and, and this, 
there's several types. I mean, it's not it's not overwhelming uh, the different amount of types of uh, machines, but just like anything, some of them are specialized and and they have different capabilities. Uh, the first one we have here is the B100. Correct me, I'm wrong. This is probably your most popular machine. Yes, one for a one color printer, for a one color uh, one color print, and uh, in the in the apparel tagless world, tagless absolutely it is. It's probably eighty percent of people will get this machine. One color, high speed. It's got about a three inch, uh, a three a little over three inch print area, which which is probably pretty, it covers most 90, 80, 85, 90 percent of tagless tags for apparel. So that's why they go with this machine. Um, this is a benchtop unit. Uh, it, it's a heavy machine, though. It's 100 pounds. It's not a toy. It's not, you know, it's pretty beefy. It's all metal. Um, and it, 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 But it's very, very quick. It's a single color print. Like you'll see the videos, um, a, th a thousand T-shirts. And I could do a thousand T-shirts an hour on this, no problem, um, on a, with, a, with a tagless. Okay. I've got several questions here. One, you said it weighs around 100 pounds. Now that is definitely beefy and sturdy, but it's not too heavy that I couldn't take it somewhere. So what I see more and more, Michael, nowadays is printing or embroidering, just decorating at events. Yep. Technically, you could throw this thing in the back of a van or actually have it at a, you know an open environment and be printing at an event. Technically, is that is that fair? That is exactly correct. You could, you could put, if you have a, you could take this machine to an event or, you know, where you want to print, uh, I don't know, t-shirts or whatever, print logos onto whatever. And yeah, I mean, it's, you could take this to events. 110 power requires a little bit of air. So you could use an air compressor, any standard air compressor you buy in Home Depot or Lowe's that you, that you power your, your, your nailers or your drills off will, will work. And then you will, um, you'll be able to, Take this machine and bring it as you said, throw the truck and start printing and printing the back of a pickup truck if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, the reason I bring it up now, obviously, it's not like you can just be swapping designs super quick and, and you're not doing one offs at all. But uh, what I've seen at events is when somebody sees something decorated there, they're more enticed to buy it versus if you just bring it sometimes. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of cool. But look at the price. Th this is what would really is eye-catching to me 6500 to 8500 depending on you know the setup Option. itself and the little accessories michael that's really really not that expensive what i can't believe how expensive and and they de i've seen them and they're great but some of those um smaller screen print uh presses that are really for tagging um so it could be the inside tag or they're like sleeves they're expensive now they are set up more for multicolor, a little bit better but hey one color printing still makes up a large portion of what customers are ordering and outside of just tag sleeves right you could easily be doing sleeves on this machine Sleeve, sleeves uh if, you know foot footwear insoles and any anything that's textile anything that's textile you can do any any pretty much any textile thing you want to print onto any you know on you know, any anything you want on this unit well well, again, $6,500, I mean, that's cheap. I, I mean, I look at a lot of equipment at the shows, and I'll tell you, planning, you know, putting together this presentation with you, Michael, I'm definitely considering getting one sooner than later. I got to move the shop. That's it. I need a bigger space. But I'll tell you, and, and the way I look at it, Michael, there's a lot less competition. If, if somebody wants to, you know, they have a customer and that customer wants, you know, branded tags and so forth. Almost every shirt, not every shirt, almost every shirt that actually does come with a tag mm -hmm. makes it, it's a removable tag. It's kind of almost a standard for most brands now. You can rip off the tag, rebrand it super easily. And just that added value there is just awesome. And again, you buy this, it's not just for printing tags. You can do a lot of other uh, products. Um, yeah. It's just when you do another product, you need typically a specific jig for that product, correct? Correct. Yeah. A little fixture. Yeah. A little fixture. So if you want to, again, if you want to print, let's say you, you, let's say you're printing t-shirts today and 
tomorrow you want to do golf balls or pens or phone cases yep. or whatever it's something like that exactly so you can have a little we 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 can make a little fixture for or you can you know go to your local machine shop you can make a little fixture out of aluminum or whatever and put it on there and and off you go and again you guys will do it yeah we, we make yeah we've we yeah, we a full in we have full in-house tooling we can make any fixture that anybody would want for pad printing yeah so something like coffee mugs that kind of thing with handles we make they're very common so we, we can do a lot of uh, we can make a fixture for a coffee mug sits into it and uh, you can print coffee mugs today and t-shirts tomorrow and golf balls the next day whenever you want you know and um just out of curiosity you ever seen a 3d printer make one of those fixtures uh yes you can do that that's fine yeah 3d we we do uh we have a 3d printer sometimes sometimes we do that for emergency tooling we do that or yeah so 3d if you, if you if you're a 3d printer you can make tooling out of that how about it yep wow yeah really cool okay then we have a different one color printer that is specifically made for printing white ink correct uh, well, yeah, they, 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 oh, well, well, the old, old machines are printed white ink. This particular machine is designed for dark, 100% polyesters. We developed this machine for a very large athletic brand, um, one of the world's biggest, and they have it. They wanted to make sure that the whites were super white, were like really very, you know, uh, obviously with, with polyester garments, 100% polyester, there's a phenomenon called dye migration which happens. So they, to avoid that, we, we use this machine. It gives them a super bright tag on, on dark polyester. It's got a heat a heater in the pad, which heats the, heats the pad to the correct temperature that works well with the ink to give it, to give it some science to it that we um, can get a very, very bright white uh, tag. So it's really only for polyester. It's, it's really, it's for a customer who may do contract work on, on polyester sports or athletic garments. And it's become popular because nowadays polyester is everywhere. You go to a sports store, go to go to go to a big five or a, somewhere like that, and almost everything you see on the rack is polyester, some sort of blend of polyester. So it's very very yeah. I mean, I'm where I mean it's everywhere, right? So if you've got if you're decorating a lot of dark polyesters and you want to you want to have a, a really 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 white uh, fine print on on the dark polyester, this is a good option for that. You know, Michael now, and you say that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, it's not as quick as, so it's, it's good. It'll do about 400, 500 impressions an hour, which is still pretty good, but it's not only four or 500. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's still pretty quick, um, but it's, uh, it's designed for, it's, it's just, for, it's just for your customers who might, uh, you know, who, who you, like if you're a, if you're a contract pad printer or printer and you have customers in, in that world where they do sports where it's a great option for that versus, and you know, one thing we, we've heard Zach is a lot of screen printers, you know, they, 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 sometimes they prefer to do the tag list and tagging offline. Some, they, they tell us that setting up their screen printers to do the tag and the front of the shirt, it's a bit, a lot more work, you know, with the artwork and all that kind of stuff. So they just prefer to do this offline, and then when they want to do the shirt, the south, the, the, the shirt, they just throw it, throw it on the screen, and and then uh, and do just do the shirt. They, we've heard that, and then obviously if you're if you're if you're using heat transfer labels, this is way cheaper, you know. So yeah. Yep. I a few different things here. One, what you often see with a lot of those performance wear too is when they print on a chest, it's often just a small logo on the left chest, meaning yep. totally in play here right um very common second thing um those polyester fabrics don't like heat you know from the dryer or a heat press and this has got to be a lot more friendly to the material itself correct exactly it does exactly and again we're and the beauty remember we're not putting this garment when we tagless print these garments we're not putting them to a dry dryer the dryer is not activating the dyes, which gives you the dye migration. So we so we avoid that problem using this, which is very popular too. Very clever. Okay, last question, um, because some of these uh, performance fabrics are, I'm, I'm gonna just think of compression. How does the ink stretch? Does it stretch well, or is it kind of yep. meant not for that compression? No, it does. It's it, the inks that the inks uh, for the, the, this machine. It's very flexible. You can take the t-shirt, you can stretch it. It won't crack. It won't peel. It's very, very durable. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And um, you know how much this machine costs? Yeah, this is more like a sixteen thousand dollar pad printer. Okay. Okay. And and it's really specifically meant to print the bright white. You really aren't 
going to want to use this for other colors and, and so forth. No, the, the standard machines, they'll do all the polyesters. They'll do polyester blends and stuff. This is just for 100% polyester um, Under Armour Nike type stuff. This is what this was yeah. for. Very popular. I mean, again, yep. it definitely. And like you said, every year poly becomes more and more popular. And also the different types of poly. I mean, geez, there's so much poly out there that feels like cotton, but you still have those dye migration and other issues. So yes, um, yeah, nice yep. time. So what we've talked about with the first couple is one color um, machines. So yep. that's not every, I don't have one on me, but I have uh, Deco Network branded pins which mm -hmm. I don't want to make an assumption, but I'm pretty sure they were pad printed if, if I have to guess. Yeah. Um, and one or two colors. And there's a couple different machines we're going to show here in which different things are moving. So talk to us about the IS, ICN 2200 here. Right. So this is a two color pad printer, which is ideal for tagless or for apparel garments. And it, it can be one color or two color. And you've got two plates, two pads, two cups. So you can have a two color image onto a back of a t-shirt. You could have all the, for example, you could have the text, uh, all the text in one color. And then you might have the, like a logo or an image in another color. So typically most common we see is like a black and a red or, or a white and a gray or, you know, different kind of colors. It goes back to this golf ball. I mean, it's two spot colors, right? There you go. That's a two color pad printer right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly a two colors on two, two spot colors on a t-shirt. So this is a, a one or two color pad printer. And what's really neat about this thing is when exactly, you know, when you're handling, when you're handling a t-shirt, you mentioned it earlier, when you're handling it. I'm just gonna say t-shirt, but any, any garment, any apparel, when you're handling onto this, when you put it onto this machine, if you look at this picture right here on the screen, you'll see a little white block, a white block with yep. clips on there. So this is for what we, we, the garment goes onto that. So obviously we got to, you mentioned earlier, it's, yeah, the operator's got to make sure the garment's straight and not crooked, right? So, so what the, the, not the this machine is the, the, the garment stays still, the heads move from the heads, it's a, the PS stands for print shuttle, the print, the heads shuttle, the, the two heads, the two pads, they shuttle, they do all the moving. So the operator's holding the garment still under the plate to make sure it's not being crooked or not getting skewed. And then the heads do all the printing. So this is the great thing about this machine, very popular. Because, because obviously, if you have a garment, you put a garment under a fixture, you don't want that garment moving from from one place to another because you're going to lose registration. It's going to it's going to it's going to be hard to get make sure the images all land correctly on a garment. Not so not so. It's a lot easier on a pen or a golf ball, obviously, but but on garments because of the shape of a garment, it's very you know your operator needs to hold that still. It's going to you know it's, it's going to move around quite a bit. So this is what's very popular. A lot of customers like this machine for apparel decorating because it gives them two color. And it's um it's it's very quick too. It's about you know six seven hundred for a two color, twelve hundred for a one color. Yeah. Wow. And again, it you can have a two head machine like this. You only you don't have to use both colors every time. Yeah. You can yeah. just use one. Yeah. You can um, use one. Or you can use two if you want to. So that's why that's why it's very popular. It's you know you can use as one if you want. And then if you get some jobs, you know the customer says I really want two color. You could go well okay. You can do two color. Yeah. So explain again to me this white block does not move back and forth correct no, correct yeah this this stays stationary right here this is the fixed position the garment goes onto this and then the heads will the heads will move they'll go across they'll shuttle forwards and backwards one one head will do one print it'll the next head will move over and do the other print so you'll get right on the garment so the, gar the garment stays nice and still that way you get perfect registration no skewing no crookedness okay. How hard is it to register colors? And is there, you know, do you not recommend budding colors? Does there need to be some space? How, how does that work? Yeah, that's all done. And if uh, it's kind of difficult to see the picture, but right here we register it by there's a, there's a dial right here. These these are all movable. Does these black levers move the pads forward and back? So we can we can set it up uh, to to have them really right next right on top of each other or separate them. So it's all adjustable by by the by by the operator. The operator will determine you know they have one print here if you want that if you want that second color right above it below it left of it right of it or in in the middle of it you can you can you can register right on the machine okay so you pretty much have like micro registration to move a plate right. just like a yep. screen and yep. then um would you ever choke or stroke the artwork so that it you know 
bots registration better? You could, you could, yeah, that's possible. You could do that if you want to do that, but uh, it's typically not not really not really used for that. But you could. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. All right, now this is different. So this is <laughs> not for yeah. apparel. This is more again right. that pin or maybe even that golf ball because you can see it's a conveyor instead of the uh, pads moving. It's the actual platform that I guess that's moving. Um, and again, yeah. just like this, you would have different um, fixtures to hold that mm -hmm. specific product, right? Yes, ex exactly. So this this is a this is a this is a, a one or a two color pad printer on on with a with a with a, with a we call it we call it an over under conveyor. So the conveyor goes over and then goes around under. So it's an over under. And this is for this is somebody would get this if they're doing um, like s small items. It could be golf balls. It could be pens. It could be. Um, in, in fact, this machine is very very popular in of all industries, the cannabis industry. Uh, they do a lot of vape pens and cartridges and all that, all those small plastic parts that little batteries and little things of those little small parts that goes into these vape pens. You know, there's a lot of a lot of parts inside these vape pens, cartridges and so forth, and they all have to be branded and, and you know they be branded. And they all have to have information on them. So it's very popular in that industry. And the way it works, uh, Zach is. It's conveyors, so there's 20 of these little thick pockets, we call them, 20 of these pockets. So what we would do is, let's say, you know, if you're using a small part, um, you know, you would, we would have a little fixture, and an operator would just drop these fixtures, drop these parts onto the onto the fixture. It'll go through the machine, and the pad printer will do, it can do two at a time. It could do one color, two color. It could do one at a time. So there's all, you got quite a bit of flexibility how you want to, how you want to set this up for, um so if, if again this this is set up for this is very quick this is for high volume applications you know large runs uh this will do 1500 an hour so it's really quick it's for for people who are doing you know tens and thousands of vape pens or vape cartridges or pens or golf balls that kind of thing it's designed for that and and correct me i'm wrong but when you have this type of setup and it has 20 of these you know jigs mm -hmm. and so forth you typically have this machine dedicated to a certain type of product. You don't want to be swapping out 20 of those at a time, right? Right, right. Yeah, this is this is for some, yeah. I mean, it's it's not, I mean, the, the fixture, I mean, again, if you have a 3D printer, you can make these little fixtures that are 3D. You know, we, we make yeah. these tooling, you know, you're going to, there's 20 stations. So even if, you know, even if the each station costs you, you know, five or six hundred bucks for a tooling, you know, it's going to add up, right? So. So it's it's really designed for it's designed for the for a, you have a, a customer a job who 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 you know who has high volume small parts um, you know electronics uh, cannabis a lot of industries have a lot of small parts need to print so it's it's really ideal for cosmetic pharmaceutical medical it's very popular for medical devices we do a lot of these in the medical device industry small small parts you know need to be branded and printed. Um, so it's very popular for anything that's kind of fairly small within that it's got a small print, uh, but it's got a lot of them. This is a great option for that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then you have the four, four color. color. Yeah. Uh, then we have four color, four color pad printing. We have a four color. We also have six. This machine right here comes in four or six color. Um, this is a four color pad printer. So this has again it could be one one two three or four color and the way that this works is it's got it's got the part the part will sit on a fixture on the bottom on the rail right here and then it'll go it'll be the, it'll be transported under one pad under two pad or three it'll go from left to right so to speak it'll, it'll go all the way across and get each one will do the color on there so it's it'll do four color pad prints uh, on this on this machine it's a uh, now it, obviously if you're doing four color you know, if one if one machine if if one color is a thousand an hour, two colors half that, three colors half that, four colors half that. So that's the only thing about four color. You know, we make sure we make sure our customers understand if you you want to offer four color pad printing, you're not going to be doing a thousand an hour. you will be more like about two fifty, three hundred an hour, which is still pretty good. But but you know, it's you, you got to be take that into account that you're not going to be doing those kind of speeds on a on a four color press. Well, and that's why you charge per color. <laughs> exactly. Um, right. It's exactly. like screen printing. Each color in the design increases the price. Right. Um, exactly. Yep. So 
Um, and then again, like you said, there's a six color oh, one. Mean? Okay, perfect. Yeah, this oh, is very did I get too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. This is a this is a very popular unit too. This is uh we get a lot of customers who want you know who you know a lot of customers. We have a lot of customers who who believe in you know offering as much as they possibly can for their customers. They they, they hate to turn away a job. You know, maybe give it to a competitor or whatever. So. We, these are quite popular. This is again one, two, three, four, five, or six color, six color pad printing. And what you'll see here is there's a, there's a tumbler or a cylinder uh, right on the on the rail right here. So it's going to go under each of these pads, and each of these pads will have a different image being printed on there. So you'll have six different images in this case being printed onto this tumbler. And uh, it's it's again 250, 300 an hour, um, very accurate. It's extremely the, the registration is very precise on these machines and you get a really, really high quality print. Um, again, if somebody wants to do six color, you can do six color pad printing and uh, you're good to go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, uh, again, this has been very helpful. Again, um, I, I find pad printing to be very interesting. The more I learn about it and the more I'm like, oh man, I got to get into this. <laughs> Um, yeah. because it's not that big of an investment. It's a little bit bigger once you're buying your own, um, you know, etching uh, laser. But I like mm -hmm. that I can outsource it to ink cups. And, and ink cups has been evolving even outside of pad printing. Can you tell us just also what, what ink cups offers as far as equipment and services go? Yeah, we so so we're kind of so the, people always when people say hear the name Ink Cups, they kind of they automatically oh that's the pad printing company, but uh, but we are very big in pad printing obviously, but we're also very very strong and we have a huge uh, huge customer base in digital UV printing for cylinders and flatbeds. We make these industrial grade digital UV printers that will print onto plastic stainless plastic tumblers and also industrial flatbeds, high speed flatbeds for doing. Um, you know, promotional products, anything that you want to print us in a flatbed, we do them as well. So that's our, 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 our two core industries would be, I say, would be digital UV and, and pad, pad printing. Those are two core, make core, core industries. Yep. And, and for those, again, I highly suggest go on to YouTube, look at ink cups, pad printing machines, but also look at their UV printers, because when you say fast, Michael, they're fast. Um, I go to the trade shows and it's like, whoa, it's printing the entire cup that, yeah. you know, has a different uh, diameter throughout. And it's amazing how fast it is. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. In the drink, in the drinkware, when you're printing onto a cylinder machine, uh, we are by far probably the global leader in that, in that area. Absolutely. Um, Michael, where, where can our viewers, you know, learn more about Ink Cups, um, wide range of products and services? Uh, they could go to www.inkcups.com, <laughs> so to speak. It's the <laughs> website. They can go on there. They can reach out to me. I, I'm the. I cover. I cover uh, from from Texas West. So any customers that are located in the U.S. from Texas West to California, they can reach out to me if they have any questions or if they need any more information or anything they need. But our website does have everything on there. A lot. You can download um, all the information on the inks, the pads, the digital UVs is on there. You can even get MSDS sheets. You can get whatever you want uh, is typically on the website. It's uh, fairly easy to navigate. Make sure you go to the applications section of the website, which gives you a lot of different applications that we, we print onto. And then make sure you click on the services that explains how we do the laser etching, how we make the fixtures, how we do everything that you would ever need to be fully, fully, fully engulfed in digital UV or, or pad. All right. And I also highly suggest go onto YouTube, type in cups in there yes. and check out again the pad printers and the UV because you guys definitely are the leaders in these two um, worlds. So thank you so much, Michael, uh, for participating. Um, I can't wait to see you guys at uh, the next, I think Printing United is when I'll see you guys again. Yeah. Um, yep. But if anybody ever goes to Long Beach, um, Impressions, that is the big show of the year for apparel and then Printing United for all printing. Uh, and those two shows, Ink Cups, always has some really cool um, equipment and, and just demonstrating their just leadership in these two um, uh, areas. So thanks again, Michael. Um, and hopefully we can do this again sometime and talk about that UV high speed uh, next. Sounds great. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Great. Great to have you on the call. Appreciate it. Thanks, Michael.